You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video. And by Utech, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey everyone, welcome back to CES Live. I am standing next to Serenity Caldwell. And I'm standing next to Renee Ritchie. And we are talking about amazing things today. Uh, right up now, accessibility. I could not be happier to talk about this, Ren. I think that accessibility is a really, really important facet of technology. And it's something that I'm really glad has been seeing more and more attention paid to it as the years have kind of gone by. I want things to be more accessible to me, quite frankly. This is purely <laughs> self-motivated. <laughs> and we're, true. we're talking about it with Steve from the CEA Foundation. How are you, Steve? Great, I really appreciate Hi, you guys both having me here. And yeah, it's, it's amazing to see what consumer technology can do for accessibility and you know, quite frankly for all of us. And we're seeing amazing examples of that here at the show. Now I know there's some debate, some people prefer uh, inclusivity, some people prefer accessibility, but really the idea is to make technology available to everyone, young and old, people with uh, visual, audio, motor, dislike learning, any, any sort of challenge that you might have, technology should make that your world better. And that's really CEA, which is the Consumer Electronics Association, which I know you guys have talked to Gary Shapiro yes, and we have. runs yep. this uh, CES, an international <laughs> CES. Um, they decided to create the CEA Foundation about three years ago. We launched in uh, June of 2012 with the focus on how consumer electronics can help people with disabilities and older adults. So we really do believe that our technologies can make a difference in people's lives. So it's exciting to see more and more attention coming to these issues, more technologies on the show for here that are making a difference in, in technology and, and just having those conversations. It, I, you know, I love it. it. It excites me. I just it's dancing with joy happy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, it's incredible. I mean, the whole idea of you know now we're looking at these smart home technologies where all of a sudden you can from you know wherever you're sitting in your home control your entire environment. Know if the locks are uh, locked, uh, garage doors open or closed, adjust the lighting, adjust the thermostat. All of that through the accessible interface in your phone or 3D printing is having a huge impact. Can you imagine? Uh, we've heard a lot from our low vision and blind uh, partners that we're working with of they've had trouble learning science because you get into the science textbooks and if you can't see that graph or that chart in there, it, it's very difficult. But if you can 3D print that, that's yeah. amazing for all students. So, you know, there's just so many amazing cool things that are coming out and it, it fun to play around with well, it. We've all crazy. seen, like we've seen like the series, the Google Nows, the Cortanas. Like you're I was joking all week, Siri, crash the compound. You know, <laughs> then I know my home is locked. But there, it's, we're sort of moving beyond that now. Like it's not just audio, and it's not just things like Skype or FaceTime. We're getting a whole range of products. Yeah, I mean, we really do see a wide range of different types of products and a lot of different interfaces. As you certainly do see the, the audio control is one interface. You see gesture control, uh, people using Xbox Connect and other types of uh, uh, products to do interface uh, through that. Uh, you know, continuing to use keyboards and mouse and, and those as well. And you know, it's really about having a wide variety of different options that can find what works best for each individual. Absolutely. I'm also really impressed with the amount of things I've seen on the show floor uh, related to prosthetics, relating to helping people who have been disabled in some way, getting the most out of their lives and being able Quasi to. Quasi robotics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was some place, something I saw at Pepcon that you know it was a, a an exoskeleton that attached to someone to allow them to walk again when they've been disabled or paralyzed, which I thought was just phenomenal. Yeah, we're seeing exoskeletons like that. You know, you're starting to see the the early days robotics that you know we're all waiting for the Jetsons moment when we can have the robot that takes care of all of us and. I can't wait to experience that myself. We're looking at the uh, automotive, uh, the, just the innovation in automotive, and can you imagine, right now in the US, every day 10,000 people turn 65 or older. So we're an aging population. The number of caregivers to the number of people who are older, that ratio is getting smaller yeah. and smaller. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden if we have robotics and other products that can help people live independently and healthy at home and not have to go into more advanced care. You know, this is a real benefit, being able to get into a car and have it take you to your appointment, you know, without having to worry about, you know, can you track down friends and family and others that can do that? And you know, some of the nonprofits, the, the CEA Foundation supports innovative nonprofits that use technology. So one of the programs, the first uh, ones that we support is a virtual senior center. So hmm. homebound seniors who would normally have to go into more advanced care, using just a simple touchscreen device 
can interact, have social interactions, they can tour, take classes, sing, do yoga, do all kinds of amazing things. The health benefits from that alone is just, it's amazing to no, see. It's, it's one of the, the aging population is absolutely affected, but we've also been seeing more efforts to have diversity in the workforce. And we talk a lot about making more diverse workforces, and one of our writers, Steve Aquino, keeps, keeps asking, well, does that include people with disabilities? Because as this technology becomes more accessible, we can enter the workforce in a much in more engaged way than we ever could before. Well, and that is something that there's definitely a lot of attention being paid to, is how do you ensure that people can have access to work and, and be able to uh, access information, and especially nowadays when so many people are able to work remotely, be able to be in different locations and work, you know, a lot of that accessibility feature, it's almost seamless. You know, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but that's something that we're paying a lot of attention to as well. Yeah, I think it's really about getting the getting the information out there to companies and letting them know that it's easier and ever to support workers with disabilities and yeah. to have them in your workforce. Oh, without a doubt. And yeah, it, that's what, you know, we're really trying to create more awareness around these issues, try to you know, really uh, challenge people to come up with uh, new innovative products. So you know, next year at CES and, and so on, we're going to continue to see more and more innovation. You know, earlier this week, we had a, a panel talking about accessibility where we had everyone from you know, Stevie Wonder showed up to talk about uh, what he dreams of seeing it too. Yeah. You know, having the uh, uh, Lama Nachman, who's a project uh, lead at Intel Labs, who just upgraded uh, Stephen Hawking's uh, communication system was here talking about some of the work they're doing in anticipatory, anticipatory computing, which, you know, is just amazing to see what they're doing. And then, you know, we had a guy, uh, Mick Ebling, uh, who has a group called Not Impossible, where they're taking and really kind of embracing the maker movement and doing things like 3D printing prosthetic limbs that you know, all of a sudden, rather than costing thousands of dollars, they can be you know a hundred dollars or so, and making that more available and doing that in the open source community. So all of a sudden, you know, they put out a design. Well, people start refining it, and all of a sudden, really quickly, they get some really cool products. And then you know, we also had people from you know Lighthouse Guild, which is a, a big organization working with people uh, with low vision. Uh, we had the CEO of the National Association of the Deaf talking about hard of hearing and deaf uh, technology, and, and a guy who invented GPS for the blind uh, here talking. So there's a lot of interest going on here, and it's exciting to be yeah, part of it. Things like beacons, we're seeing like uh, Bluetooth low yeah. energy and NFC technologies. I remember we were covering um, WWDC a couple oh, of years yeah. ago, and they did in a, in a row, they had Siri and FaceTime, and then they had someone who could walk through a forest, a, a blind individual could walk through the forest for the first time, thanks to all these technologies. And that's when I started to realize, you know, these all these things that we take for granted, the technology can now make open to such a wide range yeah. of people. Well, and think about that, not even just for how that's usable for someone who's blind and low vision, but all of a sudden, you know, any one of us, wouldn't you love it if your phone could say, there's a charger on that wall over there? Because you know chargers Dude, are in high demand. there's a parking space at CES, <laughs> just go to straight down here, turn left, that one's yours. It, it, exactly, so being able to know that and provide that information, it, it's really, uh, that's kind of one of the cool things is consumer technologies have the economies of scale to bring down some of the prices, but they have usability kind of across the spectrum. It just so happens they're really valuable. Uh, Monty Quesada in our chat room is saying he just wants to talk instead of type anyway. I'm like that too, I'm, I'm too lazy to type anymore. I use all the voice control stuff now. Well, and that really, and once again, I think that'll depend on your environment. You, you know, you're standing out here in the show floor, it's a little harder to talk because there's so much going on around you, but that's getting better and better, yep. so you can hear uh, and, and enter a lot of that. Um, but, you know, you, so you can do that, or you can type it, or, you know, once again, it's all about finding the interface that works best for you. The thing that I'm finding really impressive, both at this year's CES and just as a technology trend as a whole, is that accessibility really is becoming more of a general talking point, and bigger companies are finding a way to position accessibility more towards the general public and be like, this is not a niche issue. This is, you know, you don't, you as a person don't necessarily have to be blind or deaf or have a physical disability to get something out of accessibility features, and they should be something that we're putting in as a whole. Um, what I would really interested in, of the of the show this year, what are what are some of your favorite products that you've seen? <laughs> there are <laughs> so many the different things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, no, I name mean, people. <laughs> and, and to be honest, I haven't seen as much of the show floor as I'd like because I've been running around. Well, you've been talking to people like us. I, yeah, it's well, true. And, and You're that, evangelizing. That's the important uh, part to do, but you know, a lot of the smart home technology is really cool. Um, you know, I really am a big believer in how that's going to really change the way we control our environments around us and and what's going to happen there. Uh, there's quite a few booths over in the sands that. 
uh, are focused on those types of technologies. Wearables, I think wearables are going to directly interface into that smart home world and make a, a difference there. Um, but yeah, we you were talking about the big companies. A lot of big companies really care about this. Samsung is doing quite a bit with uh, their wearable uh, uh, watches and, and products, their TVs, Panasonic's TVs as well, have a lot of accessibility yep. features built in. And you know, I know you guys are, are big on Apple, and Apple is really well known for a lot of their accessibility features that, and you know, they're certainly running around the show as well. So there's a, a just a ton going on here. That's the fun part. It, it you know it keeps me uh, gets me in shape a little bit. It keeps uh, you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, there, there's some amazing innovations. I just love to walk around the show floor and see what catches my eye, and especially some areas like Eureka Park with all the startups. It's just kind of cool to see what people are coming so up with. If, if people want to find out more of this, because our chat room is saying that you know sometimes people just don't know that this stuff exists. Where can they go? Where can they learn about this? Well. I'd love it if they would go to CEAfoundation.org, and that is the, the website for the CEA Foundation. And essentially, we have a list of all the grants that we've given out to nonprofit organizations. They can go there, get details about them, and it's everything from you know working with the Hearing Loss Association of America and Gallaudet University for, or to you know American Foundation for the Blind and uh, a Lighthouse Guild and, and a variety of other organizations uh, uh, kind of across the board. You can learn a lot about what they're doing. You know, certainly if people are interested in supporting our cause, I'd love if they'd come and they can learn more about ways to do that there, either just raising more attention to that or, or supporting us. You know, CEA has been great in the fact that they yeah. really gave us startup funding to get this uh, foundation going, so uh, that's great. And you know, I'm always interested, if they want to reach out, let me know what they're using as technologies that really works well for them, or you know, what is their dream product that uh, they'd love to see here at CES. I'd love to create some attention around that as well. So awesome. uh, yeah, sure. have them reach out to me. That's terrific, thank you so much, Steve. Thank that was you, great. Steve. Right. Thank you, I Lovely really appreciate you. you having me. So yeah, so this podcast, just by having Steve on, is now 20% more accessible. That's, That's how true. that works. <laughs> it's the internet, it's I'm sure it's, it's like that, <laughs> math or something. We have a ton more coming your way on CES Live. I'm Renee Ritchie. And I'm Serenity Caldwell. And we'll be back instantaneously.